I don't have what I need to start my QLA journey. I hear that excuse a lot. Maybe it's I don't have enough capital. Maybe it's I don't have enough time. I have a job and a family I've got to provide for. Maybe it's that I have lousy presentation skills. Or there's a myriad of things that often hold somebody back from taking action until they think they're ready. And guess what? The truth is, we're really never ready. At some point, you have to pick up the tools you have and push forward. Now, I do believe in prior planning, so I think that the research and the preparation is important. But at some point, you've just got to say, okay, enough is enough and, and move forward. And let me give you an example from a good college friend of mine, Paul, that I was sent yesterday. And I never had heard this story before. Jim Thorpe was a early 1900s athlete in America, uh, arguably the greatest athlete of all time. But I saw the post that uh, Paul sent to me, and it came with a photo. And it was Jim Thorpe at the Olympics in 1912. He had a T-shirt on with a kind of a U.S. emblem on it, a pair of shorts that looked like he'd been out in the field working all day. One shoe, which was basically like a dock cider deck shoe and the other one looked like it kind of was a running shoe uh, had two different color socks on and so that was just interesting so I read the story behind it and it said look closely at the photo you can see that he's wearing two different socks and shoes this wasn't a fashion statement it was the 1912 Olympics and Jim an American Indian from Oklahoma represented the US in track and field on the morning of his competitions his shoes were stolen. Luckily, Jim ended up finding two shoes in a garbage can. That's the pair that he's wearing in the photo. But one of the shoes was too big, so he had to wear an extra sock. Wearing these shoes, Jim won two gold medals that day. This is a perfect reminder that you don't have to resign to the excuses that have held you back. So what if life hasn't been fair? What are you going to do about it today? Whatever you woke up with this morning, stolen shoes, ill health, failed relationships, failed businesses. Don't let it stop you from running your race. You can experience more in life if you'll get over the excuses and get on with living. You can have reasons or you can have results, but you can't have both. Boy, is that ever true. Now, most people aren't Jim Thorpe. And most people, if they had their equipment stolen in the morning of the event in the Olympics, would say, how in the world can I compete against the best in the world with basically shoes that I got out of a garbage can? But then again, Jim Thorpe was not most people. And let me give you a real life example of start where you are and how you can improve. I've been running a, a small group coaching, and one of the people in that is Jay. And we do some hot seats where we do presentations. And in one of the presentations, Jay basically pitched his idea to the group, uh, and it was a terrible presentation. It was one of the worst I've ever heard. We told him that, because honest feedback's important. And I, in the back of my mind, said, boy, I don't know if he can do this. I don't know if he can cold call. You know, he's, he stumbles around. He's not clear on what he wants to say, etc. So we suggested to him a few things to improve. The next week, he came back, he did it again, and it was like a different person came to that meeting. He was articulate, he was clear-minded in his presentation, and after he finished, I said to the group, is it just me, or is this about the most amazing transformation you have seen? And the group said, yeah, it's actually amazing in a week, the difference in Jay. So that's a great example of starting where you are, understanding not everything's going to go right, making the changes to correct what you know is wrong, and then go again. Uh, in the beginning, just like when you learn how to walk, you're going to fall down, and eventually you will learn how to walk. The same thing is true here. You've got to go ahead and take action, evaluate the action, be truthful for your, with yourself as to what happened, and then make those changes. And uh, the same is true. I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, I can't find Dream Team members. Why would they want to work with me? I can't find capital. You might have to get creative, but remember, never ask and never get. And uh, I'll give you an example of that. 
when I was going through building my first business, like many entrepreneurs, I ran out of cash. And so I was, uh, I was going to say smiling and dialing. There wasn't a whole lot of smiles when I was dialing for cash. But uh, you got a ton of rejections, a, pe- a lot of people who think that they're going to, uh, you're, you think that they're going to be helpful. But in fact, they turn out to say, no, you know, I can't help you. And that's just part of the part of life. I understand that. So there was a person who I had asked to be in my wedding party, Joe. And Joe was about, uh, if you want to be kind, the most frugal, a.k.a. cheap person I ever met. The, uh, when I asked him to be in my wedding party, he said, uh, okay. I explained to him that he needed to rent a tuxedo. And he said, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, wait a minute. He said, you know, I have to pay for the rental? And I said, yeah, you have to pay for the rental. And he said, oh. Okay, well, I hope that you understand that you're not going to be getting a wedding present if I have to pay for a rental of a tuxedo. And I said, that's fine, Joe. I want you to be in the party. Don't need a wedding present. So fast forward, I guess about uh, 25 years later, when I'm smiling and dialing for cash, I know that Joe is a waste of my time. I just know it in my bones uh, after that previous experience. But I said, what the heck? You know, never ask, never get. If I don't call, I know the answer is no. If I do know or call, I pretty much know the answer is no as well. But why not? So I give Joe a call, tell him my situation, uh, tell him what I've got going on, tell him that basically at that time I was selling my house, which had equity in it, and that I would uh, be able to, I believe, pay him back with interest. I couldn't guarantee that I would sell the house, but the market was good, so I was pretty confident that was going to happen. And he said, okay. He said, yeah, I'll loan you $10,000. About fell off my chair. So, again, a lot of us think that we don't have the tools, that we don't have the talents, we don't have whatever else is needed for success. But you will be surprised, I think, if you start where you are, evaluate what you have, do some prior planning and hone up some of those skills And realize that perfection is not the goal. Progress is the goal. So begin where you are. And I think you're going to be surprised that the resources you find along the way will help you push forward. Okay. So if you have any questions or comments or ideas for future episodes, please email bruce at brucewhipple.com. And if you're not already on our mailing list, Head over to BruceWhipple.com and sign up and grab any of the free reports. That'll put you on the mailing list. There is a lot of free information you can use to acquire already profitable businesses. This is Bruce Whipple. Thanks for listening to the Business Acquisition Podcast. And remember, you miss 100% of the opportunities you fail to take. And procrastination truly is the thief of time. So do something today, please. Your future self will be proud of you.